That makes me feel old. No wonder as well. we couldn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> They've won twice in 30 visits. You were talking at half time about mentality and, and the ground. What does that do to go and not only win, but win by that scoreline of down? Yeah, that'll be huge. I'm sure Pep was trying to install that message at half time to kind of get back to a rhythm and a bit more courage. We've seen Phil Foden in the first half. Yes, he, he said he enjoyed playing the, the number nine. I think he would enjoy playing anywhere because he loves the game, but you don't see the best of him in that position. Uh, he was isolated a lot in the first half. and. So when the team moved up the field in the second half and got closer to him, he was able to link up a bit more. We've seen it in the first goal and that's when you see the rest of Phil Foden. Now, you and Michael said at half-time you wanted to see some more courage from Liverpool in the second half, but four minutes in, they were behind. Yeah, and um, it, was, it was, if anything, it, Manchester City had, we were more courageous in the second half, wanting to play forward. This is lovely play, isn't it, between... between the, the, the City players, they kept the ball well and this was too... that's too easy, that... Raheem Sterling is dangerous, but he shouldn't be that dangerous. He goes past Trent far too easily. You know, there's nothing there. And then once he's driving at Fabinho, he starts backing off. And you have to give credit to Gundogan. And yes, he missed the penalty. It was a poor penalty. But he's in the right place at the right time, just in case this happens. And he gets on the score sheet yet again. And that's a marvellous thing for him. Yeah, having missed that penalty in the first half, of course. Much to the delight of Pep Guardiola. From a defensive point of view, Jolien, uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold on a couple of occasions really exposed today. Yeah, I think you see it in the first half when he, he gets there. Initially, he's in a great body position, but he's too, he's too deep, to be honest. He needs to, if you're going to show the line, you have to be on the same line as the attacker, which means then you're forcing him down there. And if he drives inside, he runs into you. Because I think if you see Raheem Sterling doesn't have to cut back to go inside. He just drives inside because that's where the space is. And as I said, that's... It's easy to do when, you, when you're looking at it, like Trent Ar Ar Arnold here now, he gets himself in a good position. I think if he stays in that position, it would have been fine, but the fact that he's, he's deeper than Raheem, Raheem doesn't have to cut back, he's just driving straight inside now to, to Fabinho. And if you look at his line as well, it's not necessarily great, but that's obviously something that is not being taught at Liverpool because we've seen it multiple times in the second half as well. I think, I think, a, lot of, I think a lot of the time, we, we've... It's as if people are not taught how to defend one-on-one -on -one anymore because everybody's so obsessed with playing out from the back and playing forward and making all nice passes. And as Jolien said, it's exactly the same here. In the end, Raheem Sterling knows I've got the better of this person today and he just runs at him and runs at him constantly, shakes his shoulders and flies past him. And it was, it, I think it happens a lot with every single Liverpool defender today. You see the, the last goal, Foden goes, shakes his shoulders past Andy Robertson and gets his shot away. He, at times, Jordan Henderson doesn't think like a centre defender and nor should he think like a centre defender. And he got caught and Fabinho got caught for the penalty early on and in the second, second half at times. And I think that's the main problem for Liverpool. They've got players who can defend and defend well. But when you've got high quality running at these players, mm. it's as if they don't know what to do because they, they, they're thinking about going forward too often. Sometimes you need to say, right, we are going back to the training ground. Me and you, we're going to do one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to get wingers running at you and you have to defend them. And I think that's what will make them better. And the problem is, the full-backs at Liverpool hardly ever get ran yeah. at, do they? Yeah. They're yeah. always in possession, and all we do is sit here and talk about, oh, what a wonderful cross, what a great what a great overlap. Assist. What a great, what a great assist. assist. Yeah. Look, at the, yeah. look at the assist table. And it's all fair enough, and it's, you know, it's understandable. But occasionally, you play against the big boys, you know, and they've got good players as well. You might play in a Champions League final or at Anfield against Man City. Occasionally, you have to, you know, you, you have to do the things that you, you're not asked every single day of the week to do. And when you're not practicing it, when it's not happening every single day or every single week, you get rusty. You, you know, you, you can't do it. And there were so many examples tonight. And in fact, it was almost a sad indictment of, of, of how Raheem Serling was feeling towards Trent Alexander-Arnold. Because later on in the game, he ran at him. He gave the ball away, granted. But the way he ran at him, it was like, yeah. wow, you I thought you. you were going to get past him just doing... Yeah. He just Kicking pushed the ball, it, he just yeah. kicked the ball and just... As if, as if it was like, I've got you on toast here. I'm, yeah. You know, it's, it's easy for me. Yeah, and, and, that's the thing. and that told a, a, a bigger story for me than actually the poor defender. Yeah, definitely. And, and it's not a, a, a witch hunt against Trent, but it seems to me that players nowadays work on what they're good at rather than what they're not good at. Mm -hmm. And then when you face what you're not good at, you're obviously going to get exposed and that's what's happened today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Liverpool, as you rightly said, got, got level, didn't they? Um, courtesy of a collector's item. A Ruben Diaz mistake. Yeah, yeah. and this was the, this was the same. Yeah. He just c comes across with his wrong foot. It's, um, it's, it's a penalty. Uh, Salah makes the most of it, but it was a penalty. He pulls him back. 
but it's very unorthodox to come across with your right foot like that. It's like, just come across with your left foot, take it, clear your lines, forget all about it. So, unusual mistake from Ruben Diaz, and it might, might wake him up a little bit going forward. Um, but yeah, allowed Liverpool to get back in the game, and it was a you know, the great, great camera shot this, and it was a really nice angle and a really nice goal. And you almost think Liverpool are back in the game then, and it, things could happen. But actually, it got worse. He made substitutions who didn't have an impact, and Liverpool just went, went well, just just struggled in the game then. OK, we'll come back to those further Manchester City goals in a moment after we've heard from the City boss. He's won at Anfield at last, Pep Guardiola. Pep, you know, you've had to wait a long time for a victory here, so how good... On one. What happened with Alisson <laughs> today? Well, first of all, it's, uh, it's uncharacteristic, isn't it? He's one of, the, one of, if not the best goalkeeper in the world. I can only think, and when, you, when we stop it here and we, we think of the options that, that he's got... Um, he messes about on the ball. That I can only think shakes him because then, you know, two minutes later the ball comes to his feet again and he's just got a scrambled brain. Again, you know, this is probably the best option that we, we see there. It's a miss kick and all of a sudden he gets punished for it. And then he goes on to make another mistake. And as I say, you know, some people, once they make a mistake, they find it hard to shake it off and they're still thinking about it. They, they, they panic in their mind. I actually think Allison is, is quite a calm goalkeeper. I don't mm. think he's an emotional goalkeeper. So I'm surprised to see him make back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back, uh, mistakes. And you can see his frustration. It's a horrific mm. few moments for him. And it basically handed Manchester City the game. Um, no, no point beating around the bush. Now, what's he doing there with that pass to Fabinho? I think the problem at the moment, Macca, is, is that it's almost frowned upon to just to kick it long, isn't yeah. it? And you... you see a, an opportunity or you think of an opportunity and you, you, you're desperate to find an opportunity yeah. to pass the ball and keep it instead all of all I think about though it. Michael is that Fabinho doesn't want the ball there and he gives it to him so it's like you know, it's different if the pass is on and it will help your team to get further up the field he put Fabinho right in the mire by giving it to him there so he's, get, he's got rid of it quick yeah, and again, then you should recognise it yeah, from the previous yeah. goal. When Aldum should recognise the state that yeah. Alisson may be in, let's not give him the ball back. Let's try and clear it ourselves, take some responsibility. That's what Michael was talking about earlier, about being brave, recognising the situation and taking that responsibility of clearing up the line yourself and relieving some pressure. A couple of words here for the City goal scorers. Raheem Sterling, first of all. First time since he left Liverpool, back as a Manchester City shirt, he scored at Anfield. But look at this. This is a tremendous stat of the day, trust me. Under Pat Guardiola, he's only the third player to score 100 goals. And look at the other two, Sergio Aguero and one Lionel Messi. That is some stat on Raheem Sterling, considering when he first left Liverpool to Manchester City, the criticism he had, Julian. Oh, yeah, I think his first one or two seasons, he was still receiving that criticism and it was a strange decision for him to leave, but he's justified that numerous times now, what, averaging 20 goals a season since he's been there. And, and for me, he has the capabilities to go on and be Manchester City's all-time goal scorer, because I think if you, if you look at the, the average goals over the, the period of time he's been there, and he stays fit, that's a key thing. I think if Sergio Aguero had remained fit for the majority of his time, he would have a lot more goals. But for me, Raheem Sterling, again today, arguably man of the match, yeah. um, and just produced moments that obviously win games. He was brilliant today, wasn't he? Really dangerous, very direct, can go left, can go right. You know, Liverpool actually miss a player like this now. You yeah. know, someone who can take people on, who can get round the sides, who can get crosses in. Liverpool are a bit one-dimensional at this moment in time in the, in the forward areas. Yet he was um, really confident today on form and he gets, he gets this goal, one of the easiest that he'll ever get. Served on a plate by Bernardo, but uh, he deserved it. He was, he was brilliant today. That's um, a sort of confident claim from Jolien there. So, to the goal scorer who yeah. knew numbers like they were uh, yeah. a supermarket receipts, um, Sergio Aguero, is he going to be beaten by Raheem Sterling? Could you see that possible? Well, if you'd asked me a few years ago, I would have said Raheem Sterling will do well to score 10 a season because he just wasn't a natural finish. But now, all of a sudden, his numbers are, are going through the roof. He's very, very tough and durable. He hardly ever misses a game through injury. Um, you know, he's quick. I can see him lasting a 